It's Friday, and you know what that means. It's time for your weekly edition of Travel Grunt. I'm your host, Zach Wilson, and clearly I've been in my house way too long. Okay, let's get started. What's up on the Pad of Power? This week in Cruise News, I've got good news in the Caribbean. <laughs> oh, is it possible that cruising is returning? Woohoo! That's right, get ready to go cruising in the Caribbean. Several cruise lines, Royal Caribbean, Crystal Cruises, Celebrity Cruise Lines, and more have announced that they are sailing this summer. But Zach, what about the conditional sail order from the CDC? Well, that only applies if they dock at a U.S. port. Remember, the CDC is a United States organization. Well, they're not touching the United States. For instance, Royal Caribbean has a very interesting cruise that begins in Bermuda. It has an overnight stay at the dock of Bermuda, kind of like a floating hotel, so that you can enjoy the pink sand beaches and get your sunshine on. Then you're going to enjoy the cruise for a couple days down to their private island in the Bahamas, the perfect day at Coco Cay, and then return to Bermuda so you can sail this summer. They also have seven-night round-trip cruises from Nassau, Bahamas, throughout the islands of the Caribbean, other cruise lines are porting out of St. Martin. So cruising has returned. Now, something very important, and this is for these cruises, not necessarily an industry-wide decision or the future of cruising, so don't get too excited just yet, but because of the countries that they're porting out of and the destinations they are visiting, there will be a requirement for adults to have the COVID-19 vaccination. Children going on the cruise only have to provide a negative COVID test. So adults, vaccine, kids, test. And that is for these special cruises only. When cruising gets a full restart and we see cruise lines back at the United States, we have no idea what's going to be required, whether it's testing or vaccinations. So don't blow up the comments with your opinions on vaccinations or testing. Okay. Also, uh, this is very exciting. Los Cabos in Mexico was named the world's first health secure destination by a digital health company called ShareCare. Los Cabos earned this verified status after nearly all of its hotels uh, earned an independent health uh, validation. So basically, uh, it's very clean down in Los Cabos. Uh, the staff members are adhering to very strict protocols and they're not seeing uh, travelers get sick. So it is a great place to go and get your sunshine and your beach and enjoy an all-inclusive resort. That being said, even though they're the first to be uh, verified by this company, uh, myself, uh, our clients here from Daydream Vacations, uh, as well as my colleagues throughout the nation, are all reporting that their clients are having excellent results at all-inclusive resorts in the country of Mexico, like Cancun, Cozumel, Isla Mujeres, uh, and also in the islands of Jamaica and the Bahamas. So keep in mind that different destinations have different protocols based on whether or not you'll need a test or a vaccination or whatnot. Okay, what's next on the pad of power? Hey, Zach, what are you daydreaming about? Hmm... What am I daydreaming about? Well, I'm daydreaming about a theme park vacation in Orlando, Florida at Universal Orlando. If you've never been to Universal Orlando, they have three theme parks. The original Universal Studios, then the one that came about in the late 90s, Islands of Adventure, and the world's first water theme park, not just a water park, but a water theme park, uh, Volcano Bay. This is where you're going to find the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. Uh, it's also Marvel Superhero Island, Jurassic Park, Transformers, uh, Despicable Me, The Simpsons, Men in Black, uh, and, and just an incredible adventure into the movies. Well, I recently had a couple of clients who enjoyed spring break down there, and they gave me a report. They called me and said, Zach, you've got to share this with your clients. So I'm going to read some of my notes really quick about Universal Orlando. Uh, so one thing that's very important is I do help a lot of families who 
Well, they have some uh, special needs or accessible needs, and so it's very important to note that Universal Orlando does have an accessibility pass if you need it. You just go to guest services, explain your situation. In this case, my friend, uh, her daughter is a type 1 diabetic, and they're concerned about standing in those long lines, that if her blood sugar ran low and they would have to leave the line just to start all over again, what a hassle that might be. So they gave her an accessibility pass, and basically what that means is you go to the ride, they give you a time like a reservation to come back, and then you go back and ride at that time. So you are standing in line, but virtually, so that's really handy. Now, if you also purchase the Express Pass, you can kind of sort of double up because you've got your Express Pass while you're waiting for your accessibility feature. Now, um, the uh, Road to Hagrid's, uh, you can always get a time there with your uh, accessibility pass and come back. Uh, something that they wanted me to mention was that face masks are being enforced. So when they say face masks must be worn unless you are seated eating and drinking, they mean it. Uh, they do have employees or cast members there who are, their job is simply to watch the crowds and scan it for people who have the mask down below their nose or completely off and they will come up to you and politely encourage you to please put your face mask back on. I do say politely, but if you are rude to them, please be advised. When you bought the ticket and you agreed to go in, you agreed to wear that face mask and if you refuse and you throw a fit, guess what? You're leaving. Just want to put that out there for you. Uh, to get into the parks, they do do temperature checks. Anyone with a fever over 100 degrees will not be allowed in, and that is enforced. Uh, also, uh, reservations are now mandatory at the restaurants in City Walk, except for cowfish and Bubba Gump shrimp. Uh, this is not how it used to be. It used to be a reservation was a good idea, so you wouldn't have to wait forever, uh, but you could still choose to show up and see if there was an opening or wait around. Now, the reservation is mandatory. If you don't have a reservation, they're not allowing you just to sit around and wait uh, this is part of these socially distant protocols, so make sure you get those reservations about 60 days before you visit. Um, also, uh, let's see here, uh, they ate at Mythos, which of course is an award-winning restaurant, one of the best restaurants in any theme park in the United States of America, and apparently it's still holding to that standard. They absolutely were raving about the experience and the food at Mythos. Now, the new uh, ride, Hagrid's, uh, there at the Wizarding World of Orlando, of uh, Harry Potter in Universal Orlando, uh, does have a virtual line. So if you stay at a Universal Hotel and then you get in early from 7 to 8, you can go stand in line. But after that, 8 o'clock and beyond, you have to go into the app, get a space in the virtual line, and come back at the time that you get. So make sure that you have the app and you know how to use it before you go. Um, and then uh, mobile app to order food really is required. Um, they don't really let people in to go in and order and stand around and wait. So what you do is you order your food for a lot of the walk-up countertop restaurants. You order it on the app. It'll tell you an app when it's ready and then you can go and just enter in to pick up your food and exit out, making things a more seamless experience. Now, I know that seems like a lot, but I'll say this, right before the pandemic hit, my family and I went on a trip on a Disney cruise to Walt Disney World and a quick visit to Universal Orlando. And I will say that it was one of the best vacations our family has ever had. Uh, if you want to immerse yourself into an imaginary land, uh, get the interactive wands. You can check out our YouTube channel. We've got some uh, videos there of that trip where we're casting spells at the special spots, which are really exciting. The rides are incredible, and you just feel like you're part of the story, and isn't that what imagination is all about? What's next on the Pad of Power? Oh boy, I like this one. I want to give a snout out. That is the Travel Grunt version of a shout out for the best places to pig out. Now, if you're not following these people on uh, Instagram, I don't even know what Instagram is for, you need to look up double fat ice cream. Forget keto, forget low carb, forget double fat ice cream. Not just fat, double fat. Uh, it is on the island of Oahu. They're out by Honolulu, Waikiki Beach area. Uh, I'm going to see if I can say this correctly. The Kia Lohilani Avenue by the Alohilani Resort at Waikiki Beach. Um, it's just kind of this, this back alley, and there's this little kiosk kind of a hut, and they make the most incredible handcrafted 
ice cream. Now I want to show this one to you because I love how it says for those living the dairy free lifestyle, we got you. Our Waikiki Sunrise Sunday has scoops of our leaky koi and guava sorbet, fresh chunks of pineapple and strawberries, local macadamia nuts, and our dairy free whip. Oh boy, here it comes. Here it comes. Oh, look at that. That is some tasty, tasty goodness right there at double fat ice cream. Um, you really just have to follow these people. I mean, look at the concoctions that they're coming up with. This is truly confectionery status. And all of my guests who go uh, out to Oahu and check out Pearl Harbor and Kualoa Ranch and, and Waikiki Beach, they rave about this place. This is a hot spot, not just a local favorite, but it is a favorite of everybody who visits who likes sprinkles. Uh, it just, uh, so good. I just want to go to Hawaii just to eat this. Uh, follow them on Instagram, Double Fat Ice Cream. Uh, you get the Travel Grunt snout out today because you are so amazing and a local favorite. We hope you stay in business for years to come. <coughs> Thank you very much. Um, what's next on the Pad of Power? You know, I like to end every show with an encouraging travel quote. This one comes from Sir Richard, Sir Richard Burton. The gladdest moments methinks, is a departure into unknown lands. One of the greatest things about travel is to go someplace you've never been before. And I encourage you to do that with your next vacation. If you've been to the Caribbean every summer, and you're always at the beach, why not mix it up and try something new? You could go to Alaska and check out the wildlife and the mountains and the glaciers. Maybe you've been to Alaska. Well, let's go to Hawaii, okay? Maybe you've done U.S. destinations and it's time to go visit Europe. A great way to explore Europe is on a European river cruise, especially first-timers love the Rhine River Gorge where all the castles and the little villages that take you back to the times of yesterday exist. An opportunity to engage with other cultures, other lifestyles, other people, and just see more of the world. Until next time, I'm Zach Wilson. Thank you for watching Travel Grunt.